Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bed crimers. As always, I wish you the best. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Let me just ask that after listening to or watching this video, if you learned something or enjoyed it, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Now, let's dig in. If you're closely following the case of the Idaho Four and Brian Koberger, then you know that two new hour-long videos have turned up on the internet purporting to be from the night of the crime. Today, I want to talk about those videos. Currently, it's not known if the leaked videos are authentic. However, the timestamps on them are from 2.59 a.m. to 3.59 a.m. and 3.59 a.m until 4.49 a.m. on Sunday, November 13th, 2022, the morning of the crime at 1122 King Road in Moscow, Idaho. And it was between 3.29 a.m. and 4.20 a.m. that a white sedan showed up in the King Road neighborhood. The crime itself likely took place sometime after 4 a.m. and continued up until around 4.20 a.m. when the white sedan was captured on security footage speeding away from the neighborhood. The footage purports to be from a camera that looks out over the parking area of an apartment complex located at 1330 Linda Lane. There's a fence beyond the parking area and beyond it lies a road. Note that this parking area looks out toward the road that drives past the 500 Queen Road apartments and leads to one of its parking areas. The Queen Road apartments are those two brick buildings with the yellow siding. If you're looking out from the Queen Road apartments toward the front, then on the right side, you have 1330 Linda Lane, which is a tad set back. And then on the other side, on the left, would be 1122 King Road, which is where the crime occurred. And if you were to drive from this parking lot at 1330 Linda Lane to the crime scene house, it would take no more than two minutes, and the journey would be about three-tenths of a mile. What makes these videos seem like the real deal is that a white sedan that looks to be a Hyundai Elantra appears in the footage and moves exactly how it was described in the probable cause affidavit for Brian Koberger's arrest. So much of the information known about the movements of the white car that morning match up to what's seen in these videos. There are, however, slight variations in the minutes noted in the probable cause affidavit versus what we see in the times on these videos. But this could be due to each security camera being slightly off on the time by perhaps a minute or two. The leaked videos were released on a YouTube channel called Veritas Equitas. And if you watch them from there, be sure to do it on a large screen with good earphones or earbuds. If you do that, you will hear the sounds of a white sedan driving past 1122 King Road. As we talk about the events, look to the upper left-hand side of the video. That's where the King Road house is located, and it's where you will see the car's headlights suddenly appear, and then the vehicle will follow and come into view and then make a turn. The first video does appear to capture a vehicle that looks a lot like a white sedan, maybe a Hyundai Elantra, making three passes by the King Road house. In the affidavit, it says the first pass occurs at 3.29 a.m. However, in this video footage, we first see the vehicle at the 3.30 a.m. and 44 seconds mark take a look. In the video, you can first see the car headlights appear at the 3.30 a.m. and 44 seconds mark. The car then comes into view and turns back around. The second pass by the white sedan occurs at the 3.38 a.m. and 55 second mark when you see the headlights reappear and the car making the same turn back around. The third pass occurs at 3.56 a.m. and 46 seconds, and again the vehicle turns back around. The first video ends at 4 a.m. sharp. 
In the second video, which was released first, the timestamp runs between 3.59 a.m. and 4.59 a.m. On this video, we see the white sedan once again enter the area for the fourth time at around 4.05 a.m. Again, the probable cause affidavit lists that fourth appearance as occurring at 4.04 a.m., but in this footage, it occurs at approximately 4.05 a.m. and 20 seconds. Despite the slight time time difference, a mere minute, I believe this white sedan is the same one the police described in the affidavit. This time you get a good look at the white sedan as it doesn't immediately turn around. It pulls farther up the road in front of the parking lot, parks for about 10 seconds, then backs up and turns back around, heading in the direction of the crime scene house. I do believe this is the perpetrator's vehicle. There were not multiple cars driving around the neighborhood at 4 a.m. that Sunday morning. Many people were asleep or at least inside their apartments. In my mind, this supports this white vehicle being Brian Koberger's white Hyundai Elantra allegedly. Gotta get that allegedly in there because Koberger has not been found guilty of the crime at this point. What is chilling is to watch the video as the minutes tick by, knowing what evil acts will soon be occurring at 1122 King Road. It's almost like you wish you could travel back in time, step into the video footage, run over to that house, and alert the victims. What you can easily observe in the 3 a.m to 4 a.m. video are 1. The white sedan driving down Queen Road and then turning around three times. Then, on its fourth pass by 1122 King Road at approximately 4.05 a.m. and 20 seconds, comes to a stop for 10 seconds, then backs up and turns around. This will be the final time we see the vehicle on this video, and it is presumed the driver then parks the car, gets out, walks to the crime scene, and begins the savage attack. In the second video from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m., we see the white sedan appear the fourth and final time. Some people are claiming that they can hear a doorbell ring, screaming, the dog barking, and the perpetrator returning to his vehicle, opening the door, closing the door, speeding off right around 4.20 a.m. I did not hear all of those things. I did hear the car speed off, but it's possible my hearing just isn't as good as as some of the other sleuths. Now that we've observed these snippets of video, let's talk about the timeline. It has to change slightly if we consider the times on these two videos to be correct. Both of the surviving roommates, Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk, indicated that the occupants of the home at 1122 King Road were either asleep or at least in their bedrooms by approximately 4 a.m. The only exception would be Zana Kernodal, who received a DoorDash order at approximately 4 a.m. I think the reason the white vehicle drove past the home four times starting at 3.29 a.m. or 3.30 a.m. if you believe these videos is because the perpetrator was watching to see when all the lights in the bedrooms were turned off. I also think he wanted to make sure that the inhabitants were likely in their beds and maybe he was hoping that they would either be asleep or at least dozing off when he entered the home. He may have also been working up the guts to commit the crime he planned and had fantasized about. I believe the perpetrator entered through the sliding glass doors at the back of the home and not through the kitchen window. It would have been quieter to open the sliding glass doors than to try and climb through the kitchen window and risk knocking items off the counter. He would not have wanted to make any loud noises as he entered the home and ascended the stairs to the third floor. Dylan Mortensen stated that she was awakened at 4 a.m. by what she stated sounded like Kaylee Gonsalves playing with her dog Murphy in one of the upstairs bedrooms. Personally, I believe those sounds were the perpetrator committing the first of the crimes, meaning attacking both Kaylee and Maddie on the third floor. But I also believe that Dylan had the time off by about five to seven minutes. I say this because we see the white vehicle still driving in the neighborhood 
between 4.04 a.m. and 4.05 a.m. and 22nd. He would have needed a minute or two to park the car and walk to the rear of the house. We also know that Zana received a DoorDash food delivery at 4 a.m. Is it also possible Dylan heard sounds from Zana getting that 4 a.m. delivery? That would also make sense if Dylan really did hear something right at 4 a.m. I doubt the perpetrator would have gone into the house at the same time he saw a DoorDash delivery person near the house, and I have to believe he saw the DoorDash delivery because he had circled those four times. Surely he would have seen the DoorDash driver's car at some point. I think after this fourth pass, the perpetrator parked the white sedan, say around 4.06 a.m., walked to the rear of the home, and entered perhaps around 4.07 a.m. through those sliding glass doors. Next, I think he headed straight up to the third floor. Remember, this house may look large from the outside, but the spaces inside are relatively small, and the staircase to the third floor is not very steep, and there aren't that many steps. The perpetrator then wasted no time attacking both Kaylee and Maddie, likely starting around 4.08 a.m. With the object he used to harm them, if the jabs were strategically placed, it would have been possible to do a person in or at least render her silent and still within mere minutes. He clearly had the two young women cornered in that cramped bedroom, so things happened quickly and chaotically. That's why the leather sheath dropped to the bed and was left behind. In my opinion, a chaotic frenzy was going down and the perpetrator was surprised by having to confront two young women instead of one. Let's guesstimate that the perpetrator spent three to four minutes upstairs with Kaylee and Maddie. That would have him coming down to the second floor at around 4.12 a.m. We know that Zana had likely just eaten her DoorDash delivery and was still awake using the TikTok app at 4.12. I suspect she maybe saw or heard the perpetrator right around that time. I think that's actually precisely when she stopped looking at TikTok right after 4.12 a.m. Survivor Dylan said she next heard who she thought was Kaylee saying something to the effect of, there's someone here. But because Zana was still awake, it is likely that it was Zana who said that, and she probably said it to Ethan. I don't think it was more than 30 seconds or so after those words were spoken that the perpetrator attacked his next two victims, Ethan and Zana. They clearly didn't have time to go inside Zana's room and lock the door behind them. I think Ethan was harmed first, perhaps with a jab to the throat, around 4.14 a.m. to 4.15 a.m. The perpetrator would have wanted to get Ethan out of the way first because he was tall and fit and posed the most risk to the perpetrator. Then Zana found herself all alone to confront this masked intruder whom she had just witnessed take Ethan's life. I believe this was when Dylan opened her door a second time because she heard what she thought was crying coming from Zana's room and then a male voice saying, it's okay, I'm gonna help you. I think that male voice was the perpetrator's and he was trying to trick Zana into calming down with these false reassurances. We know from the probable cause affidavit that at approximately 4.17 a.m., the security camera at 1112 King Road picked up distorted audio of what sounded like voices or a whimper, followed by a loud thud. The loud thud, I believe, was Zana falling to the ground. That's where her body was found. And then a dog could be heard barking as well numerous times starting at 4.17 a.m. That dog had to be Kaylee's pup, Murphy. I think Murphy sensed the evil acts that were going down inside the house. He knew something bad had happened to his mistress, and he could likely perceive the sounds of Xana's confrontation with this masked evil man. Dogs are known for their stellar hearing, and we know Xana tried to fend off the sharp object the perpetrator was holding. She bravely fought back against the cowardly masked man who didn't come there for a fair fight. I will continue to listen to the two videos, and I think there are others that are now up as well, to see if I can pinpoint 
find any of those other sounds that some eagle-eared sleuths are saying they heard. My suggestion for you guys, if you want to sit down for two hours and listen to both the 3 to 4 a.m. video and the 4 to 5 a.m. video, is to head to Veritas Equitas because they are the ones who release the videos and they've spent time enhancing the audio. I will leave links to those videos in the description. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories, hey, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, you don't want to miss any videos, and I'll see you next time.